Good morning. I call to order this public hearing, City of Douglasville, Thursday, August 10th, 2017, 10 a.m. This is our first public hearing for the Millage Rate uh, for this year, and um, we have a big crowd. Glad to see people showing up. Thank you. We will have three. The second one will be 6 p.m. tonight, and then the third one is at 5.45 p.m. Thursday, a week from today. Uh, what we're going to do today is have our uh, finance director give us a short presentation, and then we will accept comments from the public, uh, limited at five minutes per person or so. Um, so if uh, Karen Callen, would go ahead and start with your presentation. Thank you, Councilman Siegel. This is our first of third require uh, presentations for um, our millage rate, our tax digest and levy for calendar year 2017. Uh, this is a unique year. You'll see that as we go through my brief presentation and the fact that although we are having to advertise for a tax increase, your total uh, tax rate will be decreasing. So that is the unique part. The reason why we are um, having to advertise for a tax increase is due to the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. But you'll see that as we go through my presentation. Uh, just for th uh, those of you who do not know what is included in a tax digest, um, years ago when I first came to the city, I did not know. So um, what's included in the tax digest is real and personal property timber, mobile homes, um, your values of your motor vehicles, heavy duty equipment, public utilities, and any exemptions that apply to the total values of the uh, tax digest. Your tax bill, when you receive that, it includes our maintenance and operations, which we uh, millage rate, which we call m and and also it includes your bond millage rate. The proposed uh, M&O millage rate is the tax rate which is applied to the total property values of the tax digest within the city. This determines the total amount of property tax revenue which the city receives or billed by the city. The bond millage rate is a separate rate which is applied to the total property values of the tax digest and we calculate the bond millage rate to yield exactly the debt service payment of our bonds which were approved through a GO bond issue for the police administration or public safety building down on Highway 92. When you add the two together, this equals the amount of property tax billed. This is our five year history um, that was advertised in the paper, were acquired by law. Um, our total digest for the year um, increased by 7%. Our, if you look at the bottom row, you'll see that our maintenance and operation millage rate stayed the same as last year. We are proposing a 6.911 millage rate, and bond, bond millage rates are not required to be published in the five-year history because they have been previously approved at, a, at the voter referendum for the um, general obligation bonds. <coughs> So in essence, your total tax rate is decreasing by 2% or 0.176 of a mil. You can see on the chart that I've shown last year, um, excuse me, let me go over the blue bar is our maintenance and operations millage rate. The orange bar is our bond millage rate and the gray bar is your total millage rate. So from last year, your millage rate is 8.437 and the current year, it will be 8.261. So if your millage rate is going down, it begs the question, then why do we have to advertise for a tax increase of 4.38%? That is because the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, anytime we do not roll back the millage rate uh, based on increased property values that were not due to new construction, we must roll the tax rate back, equivalent, a millage equivalent of the new um, uh, appraised property. If we do not do that, then we have to advertise for a tax increase. I know that is, it's been hard to explain over the years, so if you have any questions or comments from the council members, um, our city manager, please add. 
This is the article that we published in the paper, and it's also required by state law. They give us a sample form, and we have to publish it exactly uh, as it is, as you've seen here. It lists our three public hearings, our percentage of increase, which is 4.3%. Again, this is just for the maintenance and operations portion of our millage rate. Required three public hearings, and if estimates on the what it means to you if you have a $125,000 house or a $150,000 house. Budget development. As we are working through our budget during the year, March or April, we do not know what our tax digest property values are. In the past, we've seen them over the past 10 years. They've decreased, they've increased. Um, we do have somewhat of an idea, an estimate, but we don't have exact amounts, so we have to develop our budget with estimates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's correct. Yes, we received the. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes, and let me um, say again what uh, Councilman Adams and Councilman Siegel have pointed out, that the Douglas County tax assessors tell us what our property values are. Then they give us the millage rate that we are required to roll back, and it's on a form called PT32.1. It's regulated by the Department of Revenue. They have to um, follow the laws of the Taxpayer, taxpayer Bill of Rights, and as the, the property assessors work on the assessments throughout the year, but we do not get the actual values until July. So when we develop our budget, which is required also by state law to be approved by June 30, we do not know the full values of our tax assessments. So we do have to um, estimate those in our budget. We're working on that right now. We've talked to the tax assessors about um, is there any way they can move it back so we can get our assessments early, but they've basically said it'd be very difficult to do that. Once our actuals are known in July, then the millage rate should be adjusted to yield the level of property tax revenue that we have programmed in the budget. The collection rates also impact the amount of revenue the city receives. Uh, collection rates have been doing really well this past year um, by Douglas County. Douglas County government collects our taxes for us. Um, if collection rates are at 100%, then the county will receive, then the city will receive an additional 228,000 over the budget. If the collection rates are 97%, we will have a $21,000 shortfall. Appeals during the year also will affect the amount of revenue the city receives. We are expecting to have a good many appeals this year due to the newly, um, the higher tax digest that most people have received in the city. As they win their appeals, that will also reduce the amount of revenue that uh, the city receives. So we won't have a good idea of our final revenue numbers that we um, will collect until uh, February of March of the subsequent calendar year. To go back over our um, historical digest values, um, if you see in 2009, at the peak of our tax uh, digest values, they have been decreasing for the past six or seven years. The city has um, not increased property taxes or increased our millage rate when we could have. Uh, we could have increased our millage rate and not declared it a tax increase. Uh, we kept the millage rate the same um, until about 14 or 15 when we had service delivery. Uh, and that is negotiations with Douglas County. And in 2017, we see the property values are starting to go back up as the economy is turning around. But we've had um, dips in our property values over the, since 2010. So in summary, the total tax rate is comprised of the maintenance and operations millage rate plus the bond millage rate. 
The total tax rate decreased by 2% from the 2016 rate, total tax rate. The M&O millage rate did not increase, but however, due to the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, we must advertise a tax increase versus the calculated rollback rate. The reason why the bond millage rate decreased, and that means that the total tax rate decreased, is because the cities was able to refinance our public administration bonds and our debt service payment decreased by 136,000 this year. So we are able to lower the bond millage rate and that is why your total millage rate has decreased. The public hearing and meeting schedule for the remaining, uh, we have another public hearing tonight at six o'clock. Thursday, August 17th, we have a public hearing at 545. And then at a special called meeting, Thursday, August 17th, we'll have the final adoption of the millage rate. And at this time, we would like to take comments or questions. We have Councilman Adams, the city manager, and Councilman Siegel here. If anyone would like to make comments at this time, please come forward to the podium. Give us your name and address for the record, and then proceed with your comments. Trinell Stanford, T-R-A-N-N-E-L-L, S-T-A-N-F-O-R-D, at 6206 Douglas Manor Court. One of the slides said, well, it said there's no increase in what we pay, but I understood one of the slides say if your house was 125000 your taxes would go up 1450 Did I misread that slide? Correct. That um, requires the slide that we. I'll go back to it. This is the required. Um, yeah, if you look at that bottom paragraph. Uh huh. Your house is one hundred twenty-five thousand because this part only addresses one part of the total cost rate. This addresses only your maintenance and operations. But you actually will pay maintenance and operations and on a bond There are no They're asking for you to talk in the mic here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought I thought I was. <laughs> okay, I've been told to talk in the microphone, but this um, this portion here only addresses the maintenance and operations part of the millage rate. There are two components to the millage rate: the bond millage rate and the M and O rate. The bond millage rate went down. The M and O millage rate stayed the same. So if your property value went up, you will, on this portion, you will pay a little bit more, but on the bond portion, you're gonna pay less. So by the time you net, it will be less. So if the value stayed the same. Then you're going to be paying less. Okay. Right. Because of our bond millage. Ms. Stanford, did you, did you notice an increase in the assessed value of your property there this year? No. You Actually, did not. It, it went down slightly. Okay. Welcome. Well, thank Glad you. to have you here. You're you're in you're in the ward that I represent in Ward Two. Yes, yes thank you. <laughs> but just we lived in the county, outside the city for 37 years, and I haven't figured out what the city offers us that the county did not. In city services. Right. Yes, ma'am. Um, what I can do, uh, I have all of your information. Um, I can compile um, a list. Many of the services will be very similar. How we offer the service may be different. Um, one of the main things that I can tell you that's very different will be your sanitation services. Um, we offer that where the county does not. Um, but there will be things that we share service in. Fire services, the county provides that citywide. Um, senior services, a variety of other things. So um, there won't be much of a duplication of services as it would be things that the county provides that they provide countywide and things that we provide that are slightly different from the things that the county offers. But what I can do is I can compile you um, some information and get that over to you. But That's we okay. did pay for garbage 
in the county. So it's the same thing. We're paying for garbage pickup now. Yes, ma'am. At the At good sheriff's protection. Hmm? Same fire to protection. And and it's just in our taxes are going to be right at five hundred dollars this year, and we just you know couldn't figure out. I know this is a city thing, but we could come to it as a county resident. Yes, ma'am. Hunter Park is city, but we could come to it. So we just haven't figured out what the city gives us for five hundred dollars a year that we didn't have in the county. Yes, ma'am. Um, go ahead. One thing that that I would mention would be because we are representing a smaller number of people in the city, I think you will see there will be some enhanced speed, some enhanced reply time, and some enhanced um, contact as far as public safety is concerned. Obviously, you're going to be closer to uh, the people that you deal with, whether it be a fire station, more than likely. I don't know where you lived in the county. I have no idea. Bill Art. Okay, you would very possibly be nearer, depending upon your geographic location, in Bill Art to a fire station here in the city from where you are. About the same distance. So you should have a faster response. I was looking for the word response and couldn't think of it. Uh, your your garbage pickup is, as I as they had mentioned, it's an automatic within the city, and it's something that's constant. You're not in control of it. You don't you don't have. Um, an independent garbage service. You have the maintenance and sanitation department taking care of the entire city. Uh, they also provide a pickup for a number of days during the year. They provide pickup for yard waste and things of that nature. But I think it's just going to be because of the economies of scales. I think you'll find it will be uh, a little more personal. I hope so. Yes, ma'am. We <laughs> hope so too. So, Thank you so much. So far, we're not impressed with being in the city. I understand. I'll give you my card. I'll be glad for you to call me directly on any issue that you might have, and I'll provide that to you when the meeting's over. All right. Thank okay. you. Sure. Thank you. Would anyone else like to come up and make any comments? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. I will add that this meeting is being videotaped, so the council members who are not here will be able to view it at their uh, leisure and get the input from the public. Same for each of the meetings. Um, no other business coming before us? We're adjourned. Mm -hmm.